All right, this is the last attempt, and then I'm going to switch to Cam Twist. I'm just restarting Firefox over and over again. That's all I'm doing because it's working. Allow. Don't block. Third time's a charm. Just randomly restart and open Firefox. Who knows why? Uh, it's amazing the tiny thrill I get when something works how it should normally always work every single time. That's how incompetent my or computers are sometimes. Ah uh, well. Yeah, see this is the window that usually only pops up when it's working, and this was popping up each time I was pushing it. But then the other window was, was not popping up. The window that says, "Are you sure you want to do this? Are you absolutely sure?" That keeps popping up. <laughs> All right, let's just uh, do this thing I was going to have in my mind that people are having trouble with real quick. It's a super quick demo. Uh, documents. Maya. And Sloan. We can do this with uh, any character, really, but since you guys all have Sloan open, I might as well use Sloan. Yeah, exactly. Are you absolutely sure you want to show people stuff? You really want to do a demo? I don't know why Java is considered such a huge thing where it's like a problem to use. Okay, so something that I was seeing in, I would say, maybe half or a third of your guys' work was, um, it's a polished, this is a, the reason I haven't really brought this up uh, until now, is it's kind of a, just a polished thing. And uh, I just was reminded it again yesterday, I was looking at a, a PR Brandy did, and she was having a little bit of issue with it. So... I just want to do a really quick um, example of what to work on when you are releasing the foot from the ground. So the, the roll off, basically. So here, let's do it. Let's do it as a walk forward first, because that's more. So let's move this to. I don't know what number it was actually. We're going to have to eyeball it again. It's a little less than this. Oops. Okay, it looks like the back and front feet are moving the same amount, but I don't really care. It's the front feet I'm worried about. So here we go. So here is this walk forward, and they look. It looks like it's working as far as just the front feet. Let's take these back feet and just move them way up in the air. So you're not looking at them. Okay, so we're just looking at his front feet, and we're going to just look at how it releases. So every rig that you have in an in a animation rig, unless it's a really simple rig, has different options here for rolling the foot. So here there's this thing called foot roll, right? And it allows you to basically put the foot up onto its toe as it's coming off the ground. So you want to make sure you're using that. Sometimes there's other ones too. I don't know. So this one has ball rays, which is interesting. Sometimes it's useful, sometimes it's not. Sometimes I try to combine them. It also has toe rays, and this pivots it from the actual toe itself. This one's very useful. 
Uh, I'm not sure what toe tap. Okay. There's a lot of controls, so it's a, it gets a little bit. Some of them are only good from the front and and back, right? So here you have like some like a lot. Some rigs will just have a ball roll. Let's twist the foot, which is kind of cool. So sort of what rotating it does. And then if you use the foot roll, there's also this foot break thing. See this? And this is really useful, I find. This shows where the the foot roll is coming from. So this foot break number. Ah. Uh, Right. It stopped because I moved it. I guess that, yeah, I can't even, I was moving it over so you could see the channel box, but I can't even touch it or break it. Alright, well that's good. We're starting up again. So I guess I'll have to just move the Maya window. Oh, sorry, so what I was talking about is all these options here. <laughs> There's a ton of them on this particular rig that tend to do weird stuff to the foot. But I think for the most part, like, uh, let me just go through them again here. There's the foot roll. Right, rolls the foot up. And it looks good for at the start, and then it starts to look, look a little bent and funky. The ball, the ball raise, it does a very similar thing, almost the same exact thing, which is strange that you'd have two things that do the same. The foot roll does a little bit of a different thing as it gets to a higher number. The toe raise, which is actually quite useful because it pivots it from the toe, but at the first point you wouldn't want it to pivot from the toe. This one actually might work. This might work for the, the dog walk, especially for the back feet. Toe tap, which is just a twist of the toes. And then you have these twisting, twisting options are kind of cool to have like for characters like you know doing little adjustments like little shifting steps and you don't want to have to mess around with the main foot control for some reason okay so exactly there's a lot of weird controls and that's kind of annoying so the most I would say 99% of rigs will just have the foot roll and the foot break well, hopefully they have the foot break. Most of them should, and maybe a ball roll or a toe roll. But they won't have all these. This is like more than usual, I would say for sure. And all you really need, I think, for for Sloan for the step off, and it's really just a matter of eyeballing it and moving things around and playing with them. And you could use a combination of these to make it work. Some of you probably did, but you don't need all of them. And it gets confusing because for those frames that it's coming off the ground, you're like messing around with a whole bunch of different controls. You can get away with probably just using these two. And I haven't used Sloan's rig, so I didn't really go into this too much uh, before, but um, just looking at it now, I think you could get away with it. So on this, the main stride key here, if I zeroed out the foot roll, which I had already added some, his leg looks a little too locked out. And, and when we are getting this line here, see how this is actually too, this is too locked. See how as I move this, there's a point where there's a, it starts to form a little bit of a bend in his anatomy here. And if you, oh, I don't have this skeleton show joints. Oh, I guess, yeah, well, you can't see anyways. If you, if you see this as a straight leg, this is, a, unless you're actually like pushing off super hard, uh, this is pretty much as straight as you'd want on a relaxed walk. As you start to straighten his leg more, you start to get this, this starts to look like it's just too much of a stretch on the walk, like for a, a, a relaxed dog walk. And a lot of you guys were getting this, and I was saying, oh, adjust it by, you know, translate down your body a little bit overall, or you can 
you know, use the uh, shoulder control and it fixes it. And there's lots of ways to do this. And this happens on human rigs too. And you can adjust their, their up and down or their hip angle. You know, if you rotate him, his angle, his hip, of his torso, oops, sorry, that's the, hip, that's the hip. If you rotate this, you get in the same fix. So you can do some rotation. There's a lot of ways to fix that little bit of a, of a IK pop. You can use a leg stretch. Uh, I'm not sure if it'll. No, it's stre leg stretch is on, so it just if I keep pulling, so it'll stretch the leg. If I turn leg stretch off, not sure what happens as I go up now. It just goes with it, right? So it's kind of a nice. If you turn the stretchy stretchies off in the leg, it's kind of a nice way to know when you're over. Like if you guys wanted to go check when you've overextended your character. As soon as I've overextended my character, the foot starts to come off the ground when leg stretch stretches off. So if you see your your foot starting to pop off the ground, you know, oh, okay, I've gone too far. So that's actually a good cheat for this particular rig to check. I, I overstretched it, and I'm not having a nice anatomy there on the on this part of the stride, right? Oh, did you guys just lose it? Desktop cam gone because I just accidentally moved the red box. All right, I restart Firefox again. Just shakes. It's. I mean, it's not 100% their fault. It's. It's Java is just a really, really finicky thing, and it, I wish Java didn't make itself so like hard to use. It's like it's like oh, it has to. Everything has to be working perfectly. Okay. Um. So you know, th this stuff that I'm going over today, by the way, is very technical, rig specific. So. The way I'm going to show you how to do it here and like those tricks, I mean, m for the most part, a lot of times you can use these same tricks with other rigs, but you might not necessarily be able to. But just, I'm just showing you with Sloan, like, to think about this, because these aren't necessarily like animation tips. These are specific technical rig tips and how to get something to work for Sloan. So you guys are going to always have to figure this out for yourself as you go on to rigs. But these are the things you want to think about. Okay, so what I would do for, for this walk for the, the peel off of the back foot is I would make sure on the stride, so maybe around through here, I want to make sure his foot hasn't started rolling because it's, it's weird to have him come up on his toes as he's walking. <coughs> so foot roll is still, I would make sure it's keyed off. And then by the time he gets to here, now let's, let's leave the leg stretch um, off. So I'm going to delete selected. Um, so I don't believe that because there was keys on it other spots, so now it's zeroed out everywhere. If you want to have a certain control locked off the whole time and you know there's keys on it, you can just right click on it and you go down to a control called delete selected and delete all keys on it and then you can always just rekey it and there's only a key on that one spot so it's zeroed out for like IK switching and stuff. It's a quick trick. So let's raise his ball of his foot up a little bit on this. Uh, Like it's up in the air a little bit. We don't want that. Okay. Yeah, so um, just a little bit there. Okay, so now he's walking forward, and now you want to do the peel off, and eventually I want to get to this point, right? Let's actually zero. Oops, wrong foot. Let's zero the foot roll out here. 
So on the mid stride, there's no. Oh, whoops, that was a foot break. Strange that I can't really get. How do I get this part to pull forward? Uh, is it toe raise? No. I want to get this joint to move forward, heel raise. Yeah, see that exactly there. So you need that's something I didn't do last time because I hadn't played around with the rig. So I, w I would want at this point of the walk for his so zero there, it's full there, and then probably this is what I'd want for the mid stride at this pose. So the keys between 12 and 18 right now are going to be really ugly, and it doesn't. It's not a nice roll off. It just kind of slides off the ground. And this is where a lot of you are having trouble. You're having like spacing pops and like little issues with rotation angle things and like rig stuff because there's so many options, right? So the real solution is what you what you want to do here. Don't think about the graph editor. Don't think about all the controls. Don't worry about having a huge mess and all these numbers popping on and off and left and right. What you really need to know is all you want between the the stride key where it's starting to roll the ball of the foot is coming off and the mid stride where the foot is like swinging through is it to look good in Maya. That's all that matters. It's going to be a mess in any animation. It's going to be a mess in the graph editor. It's going to be a mess in how many keys. There's going to be a key on every one of these frames, 90% likely, of weird stuff happening, right, to get it to work. You're going to have to be translating it left and right, changing rotation values. If I simply just don't touch any of these and change rotation values and translation values, I can probably get it to look all right. Let's just do it that. This is the simplest, quick solution. I'll do this first, but then there's a better way, which involves messing around more. So that works pretty good. And it, it looks fine, I think, actually. We can mess around and make it look better. But all I did was literally just adjust it so it looks like it's just slowly come peeling off the ground from a point, even though now it's past the stride key. The stride key's on 12, because it's, it's going to stay back. And now it's starting to rotate, flip over. And this is just rig dependent, what looks good. It's a graphic shape. And then getting in spacing, uh, usually slowing out of the step and starting to speed up into the mid stride. So if I exaggerate the spacing difference, let's even move this back more. And actually, another thing I would like to do is have it flip over more right at the end. Yeah. So what I'm trying to get is th for its position through the mid-stride, which is these frames around here, to be moving the fastest, right? So I'm slowing out here, slowing out of this position. So this would be a little bit less rotation, actually, maybe. And I would have to start using a little less heel here, actually. Yeah, so now it's pretty good. So if you watch, it's slowing, the, it's moving a little bit, a little bit, a little bit more, a little bit more, a little bit more. It's going through. Slow, now it's slowing in to the to the opposite side, slowing into the the, str the stride key. 
this is just me keying every frame and getting it to uh, work good. So the other ways to do that is to use these other options. So you can use more of the ball roll, right? Let's use more of the ball roll. I'm not using any rotation values now. Now you're going to have to start using this foot brake control. Because you could also say, I don't want to use more of the ball roll. I want to start using this toe raise. That'll work, right? Starting to peel it off. And then more of the toe raise, less of the ball roll. A bunch of the toe raise, zero ball roll. And then you just have to go back and do some translation stuff. So I'm going to move it back. So this is without any um, rotation. It's just to the ball roll. And that works too. And that works actually faster. And it looks nice. So there's that option. Now let's not use any toe raise. Zero this out. Delete keys. This is why it's complicated, because there's so many options that look good, depending on the rig. Um, let's use this ball roll with the foot brake option. The foot brake is a changes where it breaks in the ball roll. So the ball roll come here, and then, uh, well, I thought I deleted, oh, I deleted the toe tab. There we go. So here's with more ball roll. Now we're going to change where the, where the, where the foot breaks. Oh, there. Uh, see, that's starting to do weird stuff. Now, that's not actually a good option with this rig. But that's a that's a good option with some rigs. It changes the point where the ball roll changes. It goes closer to the toe and back to the middle of the foot. So you can actually get that the ball rolling off by just using the ball roll and moving the foot brakes position, but not with Sloan, unfortunately. So we'll undo all that. All right. Um, so that was the quick demo I wanted to make. I guess it wasn't that quick, but it is kind of important for um, walk cycles. And I guess uh, I didn't really go into enough. So does anybody have any questions about that? Before we, now we can start talking about the next assignment. The toe tap, yeah, the toe tap, don't use that. I think you can stick with the heel, the heel was with the back feet. Uh, where's the back foot? With the back feet, you definitely want to use the heel raise because that moves this point here. And I, a lot of you guys, I, on your demo, I was talking about has, as the foot gets back and when it gets to its main forward spot, it's nicer to see more of a stretch by doing a little bit of this. As it pushes back here, you can get a push off in combination with, I guess, the, the ball. So it's straightening the leg up a little bit because you're trying to keep this joint and this joint to be more parallel. It depended on the angle. It, was, it wasn't happening with everybody's walk. It's like a weird thing. And then I guess you can use the toe raise. It's pretty similar on the back. But the heel raise is really important for Sloan because it moves this joint here. For the front leg, it's really important because you, you want to get this, this point to be feel like it's the wrist. It's not a heel. On the front leg, it's, it's actually his wrist pulling him forward. And the back, it's this joint. I would say use, basically, you want to use a lot of, you can either use toe raise and ball and foot roll, not ball raise. I would say use foot, foot roll, toe raise, and definitely you need heel raise on both legs, those three. You can get away with just using foot roll, heel raise, and translation and rotation. You can get away with just those two as long as you rotate and translate. Like if you do a step on the back leg, you know, as long as I'm rotating this and adding a little heel raise, I guess, and some foot roll. Yeah, because if I don't have the rotation happening, you're not going to get the this this ro this thing to rotate. But you can get that to rotate with the toe raise as well, right? So you have you have the choice between rotation and the toe raise for the rotation to get it to peel off the tip of the toe and use the foot roll to get it the heel to come up initially 
and use the heel raise to make sure it, it's, it looks appealing for the front leg for the wrist to come forward and the back leg for that this joint to be straight, straightening up so it doesn't stay bent and it's just his wrist moving. You want to feel as this goes back to have a little straightening in the leg. Toe tap, I would ignore toe twist, ball twist, toe, uh, ball raise, I would ignore probably heel slide, leg twist, all those other things. But that's the thing is you might not want to ignore them depending on your walk and depending on the circumstance in your shot, you might end up using a little of those. So it's, that is what you sit down when, you're, when you start animating and you start messing around with all these uh, controls when you're doing a walk cycle to see what they do before you actually start animating. You're like, oh, okay, now I know what that does. So for the next assignment, you guys are using uh, Stella. Um, or Stu Stan, or Stan or Stewart. Oh, so you're not using Stella. Stella, Stan, or Stewart. Okay, I'm opening Stella, so I'm gonna look at her real quick, just to see. What options she has here. So she has the foot roll. Now the foot break works really good on her. See, this is the foot break control. You can you can get her to push off her toe as she's coming off. It wasn't working on on uh, Sloan. The toe raise works good too, so you can use the toe raise, but then you have to decrease the foot roll as as she comes off. And then as you start to like go into negative, it starts to do weird stuff. So you don't want to go into negative. Uh, obviously, you can use rotation and translation. And there is there is no heel heel raise on her. There's no heel raise. Um, so that's Stella. Let's check out. I want to see the other rigs. So you have. Stan or Stuart? Okay, I want to see Stuart. Don't save. I don't know which one is Stan. I guess I'll open him in a second. I think I have that right. Okay, so it's, this is Stuart. So he's basically the counterpart of Stella, he just doesn't have the feminine proportions. And I'm sure his rig is identical with that kind of stuff, yeah. Um, I don't think there's any necessarily big tricks. But one thing I'd like to make sure you guys do in this assignment with the body mechanics, because most of you guys will be doing some cool stuff, is make sure when you get into your polishing stages, you really are, don't, don't forget the shoulders. And you can either translate, oh, well, you can't translate them at the same time unless you use the middle mover. See, this is a rig faux pas in animation. You want to be able to move them both up at the same time. See what happens on the other. They're kind of opposite of each other. <laughs> Whatever. It looks like you can rotate them. I would just rotate them. I wouldn't translate the clavicles. Try not to translate them. Just rotate them. When you get your shoulders going. So when you have your assignments going, really exaggerate what the shoulders are doing because you can get a nice loose feel. Oh, let's check out. Dan, which I didn't have a scene with him, but I should have him in my rigs. Loading. Yeah counterintuitive. Uh, but I'm, I'm doing an animation right now, uh, a freelance job, and the rig's the same problem. And you know what? I've worked in feature film where it's the same problem. It's just a common thing. So, so this is the big guy. Yeah, he has the same issue. It's fine. I think you can get away with rotation, because technically, if the rig is rigged right, and a lot of times it's not rigged right at all, this, this is actually, these are rigged really well. The rotation is what you
wanted to be able to do. And these, if you think about the shoulders, they're they're moving up and down with your muscles, right? But what's pivoting, if you feel your feel your like everyone just you're not, you're not I'm not canning you right now. Feel this this bone, your clavicle bone. It's like this long one here. You can sort of see it. And if you feel like feel the the insertion and the origin, if you as you move, rotate around, what it's doing is it's just it's just rotating up and down and forward and back, and it's pivoting from this center point right here, right? And it looks like these ones are all pivoting from the same spot. So this is pivoting from the center. It's pivoting from the right spot, right? This is the pivot point, even though the rotation thing is way over there. But it is pivoting from the right po point. Oh no, it's it's good. It's in the right spot. That's where it's pivoting from. So this is co uh, anatomically correct, and that way you don't need to translate. If I was to show you the rig that I'm, <laughs> if I show you this. Uh, So this is the animation I'm doing freelance for right now. I'll go back to Stan in a second. We'll look at him. And his shoulder rotation is not in the right spot. It needs to be more. It's it's too far out. And this is actually this is better than some of the other ones. Sometimes they're way out on the edge, so it doesn't look as good. It's not rotating from the center. It's just rotating out here, right? So it's kind of hard. So I end up doing uh, more translation because this actually works better, and I have to combine them. And then there's this other controller that's out way out. Uh, Way out here. <laughs> I'm not sure what this is supposed to do. <laughs> Anyways, it's not the best rig. But uh, yeah, check it out. Here's him playing a little music. I will turn the sound on. That's a fun little freelance I'm working on. A bunch of characters playing music. Um, monsters, I should say. It's for a tech demo for uh, AMD, the chip company. So they're going to have a bunch of monsters in the orchestra playing music. It's like a three-minute musical piece. All right. So let's just take one more quick look at Stan. Yeah, that one looks kind of like the Gremlins. I remember it. Don't worry. I remember Gremlins. So for his feet, it's probably the same thing. I would use the foot brake thing. This foot brake works pretty good. But you can also use the toe raise or the rotation with the combination with translation. Um, and yeah, remember that trick if you turn off stretchy leg, whoop, and I start to translate him up as he breaks his his as it gets to the point where he's he's locking out his knee. Watch how the one leg keeps stretching and you're just getting a locked leg and the other leg starts to lift off, right? So if you want to see where your knee pops are, turn off leg stretch and then you can go back and fix those and then you can go back and turn it back on if you actually want him to stretch at some points when he's doing huge push-offs and things of the like. Sorry, I should have been moving this, this one. Okay, so that's it. 
Oh. Gremlin. All right, well, it wasn't really anything new, so I want to start talking to you guys now about your assignments. Allow. Don't block. I was just showing you this quick trick with him. When you do your moves, turn off leg stretch, and when you move him around, you can see how you can tell when this leg is going to be, uh, uh, the eye cave is going to pop because his foot will come off the ground. So, yeah, but his feet are the same as Stan and Stella's, so he's going to be fine for you guys to use. All right, close Maya, bloop, don't save. So, let's talk to you guys about your assignments and if I can find some ac applicable, cool mechanics clips, I will. Um, so, let's start with Alan. Or does anybody wanna, does anybody wanna go first? Any volunteers? Uh, I'm not sure if everybody has ideas. Just uh, call yourself out. <clears throat> Brandy. All right, let's open your reference. Oh, yeah, you were doing some martial art thing, right? Hello? Yes. Hi. <laughs> Can you hear me? I don't see Brandy. Oh, <coughs> there we go. Hello, hello? i got to change it so you're not going to hear yourself. I hear you. I hear you. I just have the uh, um, speaker on. I don't want... You don't want to hear yourself echo. Okay, so we'll go to your workspace. Is that your P public review? Uh, no, it's on my workspace. This one here, video reference. Ah, damn. Yeah, there's another lag. Hey, Huey. So, explain uh, again what this is. Um, so, a kata is basically uh, like a karate routine. Um, where you're imagining you're being attacked and then you have to fend off your attackers, but there's not actually... <laughs> Hi, cat. <laughs> there's not actually, uh, like, anyone you're fighting. Okay. It's There's some serious lag right now. It's because your video is huge. I blame you. <laughs> it is really large, and I actually cut out about 45 seconds of it. <laughs> We're waiting. Sorry, guys. <laughs> All my fault. Yes, okay, it came up. So, let me just scrub through. So you're going to do, do you have a frame range picked out? I do. Um, right now, because she, uh, that's my little sister, she has a couple hesitations I don't want in a couple places. I want to speed it up a little bit. Uh, but right now I have it set at 240. Oops. Yeah, 240. No, I mean, do you have a frame range? chosen from the video reference. Oh, for the video reference? 
like like this is way too long for your assignment. So what section would you right. want to do? That's actually two of them put back to get, it's the same thing put back to back from different angles. Um, right now it is at 12 seconds. I have to cut it down to 10, but she's got some hesitations in there I don't want. Oh, I see. Okay, so you're going to do this whole thing to speed it up, basically. Right. Cool. Um, I can't, when I push play, it doesn't, it doesn't play because we're doing get desktop cam, unfortunately. Uh, you know what? For, for yes, this purpose, Casey, the if you guys got reference, I'm going to use cam twist. So I'm gonna reopen Firefox so that we don't have this huge lag. Quick Firefox. All right, this will be, I think, a lot faster, so we can play stuff, and uh, you just won't see me. But hopefully, you'll get response for the, the video, which is what we really care about. Um, so, one thing I want to show you guys, and this is actually a really cool example of this, because you're doing kind of a uh, a attack type thing. Let's see, combat. So where is it? Okay, here's some cool clips uh, I stole from Blur, and it's a fight scene. Now I'm gonna I play this, and then I'm gonna frame through it, and I'll show you the difference. Uh, I'll, lo I'll load these up on the on the your your page too. Okay, so all this is, and it's probably not playing super fast. Huey, you gotta get down. Cat is in front of monitor. Okay. If you're watching this, this is a swinging sword, and the sword hits this guy. So all that's happening here is an anticipation, and then an attack, right? And this is a very simple example. All I did, and this is what you want to do in animation, especially when you're doing your thing kind of thing, Brandy, because you're doing a lot of, like, attack type things. This is a retime of it. And you'll be able to see this when you play them, when, when I actually, in real time, when I upload it better, because this is through streaming internet. So this is just me cutting some frames out and adding some frames in here. And it looks way cooler, but all I did, if you frame through this, is I added frames here. I copied and pasted some frames so that there's some holds on the anticipation. And I took out frames through here. There's two frames. I took out a frame between here and here, a frame between here and here, and a frame between here and here. So this part here is favoring, slowing down. And this is all from mo motion capture, so it's a realistic timing. And this is sped up. So what you're doing essentially when you want to do like cool hits and attacks, and this is like a, a, a cheat, uh, is and any anticipation for a punch, you're going to take your video reference you have of your sister and retime it so there's a little bit more before she does her attack. So she's coming back to do something. You're going to add like two or three frames. And then when you get to the attack point, there's going to be some frames in the video reference. You're going to take out a few of those. So you're going to have, instead of this, you're going to have this power, right? And it's going to look awesome. It's going to look way more caricatured, uh, and she's going to look way more badass, because you've retimed yeah. <laughs> the, mo the, mo the movement. And
and that principle works for a lot of uh, type of stuff. Anytime you want, the, like this feeling of of really clear, powerful movements. It doesn't have to be attacks, but it's really really effective in combat. And there's a an animation online where they did this. Well, also here's a great example of it. Uh, I'm sure you guys have seen this. Where it's <laughs> 300. Remember this movie, Cam Twist. <coughs> the scene here. Now they cheated because they actually slowed down the camera at high speed. And then they go back to real time for the attack. So that his anticipations on a lot of these are in slow motion. Like here's a great example. So it, he's flying around. They, I don't know if you guys know how they did this, but they filmed this action sequence in one take with three cameras. So they're going back and forth between the three cameras, close, far, and far. So they slow down. This is that, like 60 frames a second or 100 frames a second anticipation. And then on the attack, they go back to real time. So you feel like this really powerful boom attack. There's another really good example coming up. Uh, there, real time, slow. Slow, fast. So he, it, it's also changing the camera, which I don't want you guys to do. Slow, and then bam, they're taking out frames there. Find out the best one. The best one is the shield one. Where is it? Comes up here. Okay. So, so violent. Yeah, this is my favorite one. Okay, this is awesome. So this is the principle. He's coming through pretty fast, and then they hold right here, and then they get rid of frames as soon as the impact happens, and this guy goes back into slow motion. So there's like a frame where he just pops into, bam, into that. So this this cartoon, Superman Doomsday, uh, there's a fight scene. This is, I'm not going to show you guys, this is three and a half minutes long where Superman gets his butt kicked by Doomsday. It's not slow-mo. It's done in real time, but they use that principle of animation. So if you look at the fight scene, I'll find some example. This is a really good example of this. So cool. They, they look so powerful because of the way they did it. Um, by the way, they completely destroy each other and destroy the entire city. It's a way cooler fight scene than the Superman movie that just came out. I don't know if anybody <laughs> saw that, but this is so much better. Okay, here's just some punches. Look at how they do that. Watch, watch as I frame through this. Anticipation is holding. Tons of frames. And then he's just hitting him in one frame. His fist has already hit him. Anticipation, anticipation. Like It's almost a hold. It's almost like it's just a comic book with one frame just moving through it. And then here's a one frame swipe. It's just one frame. And then he's hit him again. And they do this stupid white flash frame, which is unnecessary. And then he's overlapped, anticipating again. Three, four, five, and then bam! And they do this throughout this fight, like almost every. There's another good example of it. He might just get. Oh. Yeah, he gets completely creamed. <laughs> I think this part's here. I think it's another good example. Um. The old jaw throw. Yeah, this one's great. <laughs> so here, it's like anticipation, slow, fast down, slow, anticipation again, and then look at the spacing between there and there. Super crazy. This is, ne this is not realistic spacing. This is like they like, would cut out. If this happened in real life, there would be five or six more frames if they had to have mocap actors. But he just shoots them off screen in two frames. So you get this really big read, and then, bah, power. He's like... Now he's already 100 feet away from him, and he's going to hit this building. So that feeling is um, the feeling of, like, superpowers. And it makes that, – that's exaggerated to a ridiculous extent. But that clip is really good. If you guys – it's on YouTube, and I can put that up on the, on the site, uh, the Dropbox thing. So think about that when you're doing this, and I, I think your reference is fine. Like, you can just go for it. There's nothing really complicated in here as far as, like – 
I don't know how I'm going to deal with that in the rig. It's all pretty straightforward. You know, I guess there's a little bit of rotation. Where is that? Oh, sorry. You guys aren't looking at what I'm looking at. <laughs> there's a little bit of rotation, uh, like, here. She rotates around 180 degrees, but that should be fine. And, and you can see on her foot, you can do a little ball twist there, or you can use the rotation. I would probably just use the foot rotation and a little ball roll. Make sure you get that kind of stuff in there in your when you do your polish. You don't need to have it in your blocking. But your reference is great, so it should be fine. It should be fine. Just speed it up so you have it done in the time range, and think about that retiming that I talked about. Absolutely. All right. Uh, anybody else? We're running a low on time, but I'll stay for a few more minutes, and we can also do this next next week because more people are going to have ideas, and you guys can send me um, messages. Send them to the class, actually, because then people can all contribute. We went a little okay. later today on the stupid Maya demo. Sorry about that. Do you have a reference, Casey? Or do you uh, no, I don't have any pitch? reference yet. Oh, that's fine. Yeah, I have two ideas. Um, I'm just trying to decide between them. Okay. Uh, hello? I'm here. Um, okay, I hear so you the first here. idea I had was um, to have like Stuart throwing a boomerang and then with his momentum he like spins around and then when he gets his balance back he like looks up to see um, like where it is and he can't see it so he like walks back and then a the boomerang like hits him in the head and he like falls flat on his face. That's cool. I like that. So that's the one idea. The idea. And then the second idea um, was having like Stella chasing a butterfly. But because like you can literally do anything, I try to break it up into um, like short, shorter like sequences. So like um, let's just say um, she's like chasing the butterfly into the frame and then she like jumps up to catch it and she like misses it and then the butterfly like goes around her and she like does like a bit of a twill and then like runs after it, um, something like that. Or I also thought like chasing the butterfly into frame and then she um, like is leaning over a pond and like the butterfly is like... Um, over the pond and um, she's reaching out to it like trying to keep her balance and then like um, a fish like jumps out of the water and like eats the butterfly and then she like stomps her foot and like something like that. <laughs> yeah, that, the only downside to that one, I, I mean I don't want to see too many camera m movements uh, or cuts, like try to keep it yeah. simple, we could have a few, um, is you have to animate a butterfly. <laughs> I'm not sure how hard that yeah. would be. You'd probably just do a little quick rig, and it could just be a cycle of it flopping, moving around. I don't think that'd be that hard, but it would take more work because yeah, it, it's I've I've had I've had students do stuff like that before, like chasing a bee or a, a butterfly, and and I they've actually had to spend a substantial amount of time making it look right because like they just have like a, like I'm like do a bee because he, he had this idea, a similar idea I think it was for one of my assignments. And he did it, but it just looked yeah. like a floating Maya ball. And I was like, no, it has to move like a bee. It, it's because people are going to see this and go, yeah. well, I can't even animate it to look like a bee. It doesn't what look right. That? So if you don't get it, to, a butterfly is even more difficult because they have these really frantic, fluttery type moves. So you're going to have to get video reference. You're going to have to study it. You're going to have to actually work on timing it out right to make it feel like how you want it. So you're adding another layer of, of, of work for yourself, which is totally fine. Like, I mean, it's just yeah. you're not focused on. on stellar stance. So as long as you're aware of that and you're like, I'm ready and ambitious for that, then I think you should choose the one you want. And in a case like you have, where you have these two ideas that you seem like you're kind of excited about, it might be actually useful going all the way to the point of going outside with the camera and having someone record you running around pretend chasing a butterfly and then having someone else, you record someone else pretend throw a boomerang or if they have one, you know, throw something, it doesn't matter, it won't come back and hit them yeah. and then act out getting hit. And then you have the reference. You can go out and, you know, spend 20 minutes, like half an hour shooting it, go back and look at it and, and watch it and be like, this one actually looks way more fun now that I've seen it, right? This one inspires me more. Yeah. So if you have the time, go film them both and then choose because I don't really care. I think they're both great ideas. They both could be really strong. Um, 
the butterfly potentially would be more work. I would yeah. Say. That's the only difference. Yeah. But either choose one or go out and film them. Uh, you can act them out. You could do the boomerang guy too, and just uh, and then go back and sit and look at the referencing computer and make a choice. We can, or you can upload it to, to the, the the kind of section you would do in the frame range you would do roughly to your PR, and I can you can have me check them out. But yeah. it's really your choice. I'm going to support your guys' choice. Okay. Right? So I want you to choose the ones, everyone, if, you, if you're in the same dilemma where you're choosing between two or three ideas, choose the ones that make you want to animate the most. You could say one, and you're like, you know, that would be a yeah. really good assignment, but I'm not as excited. I really want to animate the butterfly chasing, even though this boomerang thing is cool, or vice versa. Do the butterfly then, because yeah. the more excited you are, the better it's going to turn out. Yeah. That's and then um, for ideas. the boomerang one, let's say, um, like, I would want to use Stuart, but um, let's say I can't find, like, a guy to video reference. If I video reference myself, would that be, like, an issue? No, you you could totally do that. Just when you're anim – like, okay. if there's – like, for example, let's say in the part he, he throws the boomerang or whatever and you have him, like, if he gets a big wind-up, he takes a few steps – and then he looks and he doesn't see it. And when you turn around and do your kind of casual walk away or whatever, I don't know exactly what you're planning, you know, you might have a slightly more feminine yeah. casual walk away, and you just want to downplay that a little bit when you're animating him, right? Yeah. It's, it, it's, sim it's simple enough. And, and if, I would say if, the, if it was the opposite case, if it was a guy wanting to do her chase the butterfly, it might be slightly more difficult to get the feminismness of it to be real because guys tend to really yeah. over over exaggerate feminism a lot, and it starts to look, <laughs> uh, yeah, not I don't know. Like it's hard. There's mannerisms that females do that you can't do as a guy innately, so you tend to over exaggerate. Yeah. This is what a girl does, and then it's like not right at all. Uh, but I think you could probably get away with making it making it more masculine, you know. Yeah. <laughs> Put on some shoulder pads. <laughs> yeah. Uh, if, well, if you were going to do uh, – did you say you were going to do Stuart or Stan, the big guy? Um, I wanted to do Stuart. Okay, yeah. If you were going to do For Stan, it would be helpful to go get –